Chapter 12, Jolly Green Giant. I barely managed to wring the water from my lug holes when I sensed the law. Their presence crept into the atmosphere like a gas leak. It must have been the smell, or the sound of the spinning wheels from their jeep making its way across the sands. My adventures were about to prove short-lived. I looked up and saw for myself. My heart sank to the bottom of the straits, tangled in the reefs, suffocated and drowned. Something like this had to happen. I'd known it all along. I'd felt it in my bones, every man jack of them were in on the conspiracy, the world over. At the very least I'd expected to see a few sights before getting pulled, another week of gallivanting as a minimum, to make the punch-up I'd had with the sharks warranted. An old jeep rolled up as far into the sands as its tires would allow. Two in the front and another four little nips stood up in the back. They quickly jumped down armed with their little toy guns. Those didn't faze me, guns or not I'd flatten this lot if that's what I decided, but where to next I thought. It was over, the bubble had burst. All my energy had run down my legs and into the sand. I was drained, the elation of making it must have masked my fatigue, only seconds before I'd been ready to take on the world. Six of them, their faces etched deep with malice and looking with hostility in my direction. All but one fella who was studying the sky directly above his head as though he'd never seen it before and trying to whistle the theme tune to MASH, the American TV show. One he probably loved but didn't quite understand. The only one clever enough to realize that I could easily take out his army of singer dwarfs if I'd wanted and ensuring he wasn't the one to ruffle my feathers. I'd often toss dwarfs across the bars of Blackpool without issue. I'd have no qualm slinging this lot right back into the straits and feeding them to the sharks. Mr. Sykes, the driver yelled in a typical piercing Mandarin tone. He grinned evilly, his direct reference to my name ensuring I knew that he knew exactly who I was and what I was wanted for. For all the notice I was taking he might as well have been speaking to a side of beef in the singer slaughterhouse. The day's happenings were revolving around my head like a merry-go-round, my concentration was elsewhere. What I presumed to be the sergeant stood in front of me glaring aggressively. My size wasn't going to intimidate him, he had been pre-programmed with an air of authority, that even he believed. He was clearly the long-lost Chinese cousin of Inspector Dawson. Then he smiled. Forty or fifty big white teeth in a grin characteristic of the rest of the people I'd met since I'd arrived and then nodded. These gooks always had too many teeth, I'd look that up at some point. You're coming with us, he barked. His eyes were like grappling hooks, rotten cruel eyes the color of fish. 